This is a KTW News Special Edition. Joining us on this special edition of KGW News at Noon, I'm Christine Pitawanich. It's a big day here at KGW because today we are having our parade of toys to mark the end of the KGW Great Toy Drive. We'll get to all of that, all the celebrating in just a bit here, but first, an aerial shot from our KGW Fly 8 drone. You can see people pulling up, crowds already in front of our KGW studio. They're there because they are dropping off all the toys that so many of you have donated over the course of the last month. So all of our community partners are now bagging up those toys, bringing them to KGW, which is now going to be a part of our parade of toys today. This is a look at our toy box. Once it was filled up, this just this morning, actually yesterday, it was filled up to the brim. We've made space because we know more toys are coming in. People are gonna be coming in and out. Our Drew Carney is out there socializing with people, getting acquainted right now. He he will be kicking things off here in a bit and we'll talk to him momentarily. I think having a brick and mortar place that you can go to that's right here on Gleason Street is a much more dig dignified and probably feels like a more secure environment than a shipping container under the bridge. That was Scott Kerman, executive director of Blanchet House, talking about a new spot in downtown Portland aimed at lightening the load for homeless people. The facility is a new storage space where they can leave their belongings, knowing their stuff will be safe. Previously, people could keep their belongings in a shipping container under the steel bridge along the waterfront. That shipping container attracted drug use and campsites. But a new space at Northwest 5th and Gleason is a lot bigger, and it'll be open seven days a week from 7 in the morning until 8 at night. The city of Portland hired Central City Concern to run it. So anything that can relieve stress off the community would probably help. Not carrying so much weight on me, and therefore I can actually move around instead of stay stuck in one spot. The storage space will also have outreach workers on site twice a week, connecting people with services. And today, the city of Vancouver opened up its fourth safe stay community. The community for homeless people is located just off Main and 45th. The opening ceremony wrapped up within the last hour. You can see video from it right now. Washington State Governor Jay Inslee was there too. The nonprofit Do Good Multnomah will manage the community. It'll house up to 40 people in 20 pod-like structures. People living there will also have access to mental health services and showers, though camping will not be allowed within a thousand feet of the site. Vancouver City Manager Eric Holmes says the city expects to start moving people in on Monday. The Oregon Supreme Court will decide if a group of Republican state senators can still run for re-election in the upcoming term after they participated in a six-week walkout in Salem earlier this year. Lawyers so, on both sides presented will. arguments in court yesterday. The case comes down to the wording of Measure 113, which voters approved last year. It temporarily disqualifies a lawmaker from seeking re-election after 10 or more unexcused absences. The lawmaker's argument hinges on the wording there on your screen. For the term following the election after the member's current term is completed. So they're arguing that as written, Measure 113 would make them ineligible to run in four years because the next election takes place before their current term ends. The Secretary of State's lawyer pushed back, saying voters' intentions matter. The reason why this court does not interpret constitutional text in isolation is because there is a significant risk that in doing so, it will subvert clear voter intent. I don't think that the state really has much of a leg to stand on here. That second man you just heard from is Senator Tim Canope. He's one of the lawmakers challenging Measure 113. He says he expects the court to make a decision by March since that's his filing deadline for re-election. Because of the impact to upcoming elections, the Justice Department says the case will be fast-tracked. 
And staying with local government, former city commissioners Steve Novick, uh, commissioner rather Steve Novick, announced his run for Portland City Council this morning. Novick is running to represent Portland District 3. He served as city commissioner from 2013 to 2017, but lost his reelection bid to Chloe Udaly. After the loss, Novick took a position as an attorney for the Oregon Department of Justice. Okay, time for a little weather on this Friday. Rod, I am loving the skies outside. They're clear, they're sunny. Yeah, uh, and it continues to be crazy mild. Again, I, I keep saying this every weathercast now, but the normal daytime high, 47. We're at 51 right now. Clearly, this string of just well above normal temperatures continues. And as you look at Oregon and Washington, realize not only a dry forecast all areas today, but a dry forecast all areas tomorrow and all areas on Sunday. So your outdoor plans, rather be for fun or for work, all a go. And look, Christy mentioned the sunny blue skies. Look at the Cannon Beach. Absolutely beautiful. 56 degrees. Still believing Tillamook, for example, maybe up in Seaside, there could be a 60 degree number at the coast this afternoon, potentially. Now, it's not sunny everywhere. Here is the uh, live camera from the Oregon Veterans Home camera out in the Dalles. We have a temperature inversion in place, and from the east gorge out to the basin, that often locks down cloud cover. It's 44 right now. You won't warm up much, and the clouds may not break. We have mainly sunny skies over Portland. There's that 51 degree temperature, projecting a high today of 54. We'll talk um, Christmas Day, which is a week from this Monday. We'll also talk about Mount Hood Snow, uh, Mount Hood Ski Resorts being open this weekend. That's coming up. Okay, sounds good, Rod. Thank you. Now, back to a day that we look forward to every single year. Thousands of toys are being dropped off at the KGW Studios for the Parade of Toys. Drew Carney is out in the middle of it all. Hey, Drew. Hey there, Christine. We are live outside our studios on a beautiful Friday afternoon as we kick off this year's KGW Great Toy Drive Parade of Toys. Pretty quiet behind me here, right? Let's switch spots. Photographer Ken, let's see the crowd. How's everyone feeling today? We have volunteers here from all over the area, especially our Toy Drive partners from Fred Meyer, Zipley Fiber, IQ Credit Union, and Toyota. I'll tell you what, gang. I love the cheering, I love the clapping, but I would really love to see your hands grabbing some toys. Should we get this parade underway? Yeah! Go get some toys! And with that, we are underway this year. This is basically the culmination of all of your donations, our viewers in the area, throughout the area, dropping off toys at collection sites near and far. Today is when all those toys at the various collection sites get brought here to our KGW studios. One of the biggest collection spots of all, local Toyota dealerships, so it's very fitting that we have that Toyota Tundra at the head of the pack with a bin full of toys that are now being brought into our toy box. So the way this works is the toys come into the studio today, our Toy Drive elves will go through them all, bag them all up so that we can distribute them to local nonprofits over the course of next week. This is just the beginning, Christine. The start of our KGW Great Toy Drive Parade of Toys. We'll have much more coming your way throughout the noon hour. I love this annual tradition. Such a fun day. Thanks, Drew.